What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be doing some metal casting aluminum using green sand. And because Halloween is right around the corner, every store has a bunch of different types of Halloween decorations. So for today's cast, I picked up a light from the Dollar Tree. You can see it's a two-part mold because the seam in the middle. So I split the seam, making it easy for me to make a sand mold out of it. So the box I'm going to be using for this is actually the very first box I ever made when I started casting metal. After placing the pattern in the box, I then put my runner and now I'm going to coat everything with talc. This prevents the sand from sticking to the pattern. Next, I'll riddle on some sand using a fine screen. This helps get the smaller detail on the pattern. When that's finished, continue filling the rest of the box with sand. Press down firmly on the sand surrounding the pattern and continue filling the box with sand. Now, at this point, I realize I really want to get good compaction and I can't do it because the pattern is hollow. So what I did was I flipped over the box and I filled the pattern with sand. Doing it this way would allow me to use my ramming tool on the back side. So after I filled it with sand, I then flipped it back over and used my ramming tool. Next, I leveled off the top and put a board on the back, allowing me to easily flip it over to work on the other half of the mold. I then gently carved away at the outer edge of the pattern. This will expose it so I can fasten the other half of the pattern to it. And now that that's all cleaned up, I can now put on the back of the pattern and the other half of the molding box. Now I'm adding something they call the spin trap. This prevents bounce back on the runner and helps with better flow. Adding more talc because I scraped away some of the sand surrounding the pattern. And lastly, I'm going to be adding the sprue. This is where the molten metal will flow down into the runner. And now I'm going to completely fill up this half of the mold box. Now that that is filled and compacted, I need to cut in my pouring basin on the top of the mold. I like to use this pipe that gives me a perfectly round hole. Once I'm finished scraping out all of the sand, I'll then carve away a little gateway from the pouring basin to where the sprue is, and then remove the sprue. Now that basically completes the mold making for today's cast. So I'm going to remove the pattern and inspect the green sand mold that I have here. It looks pretty good, but I am now thinking I might need a feeder. The feeder is used to prevent cavities due to shrinkage of the molten metal. So I'm going to place the top half of the mold back in the sand mold and try to cut in the feeder with the same pipe I used to cut in the pouring basin. The reason I put the other half of the pattern back into the sand mold is only to try to keep the sand firm for when I press down on this pipe. Now I'm just carving away a little bit at the sand to give it a radius edge and then carve in a gate. That is where the molten aluminum will flow into the mold. I'll now remove this half of the mold and prepare my box for metal casting. Head outside and melt down some aluminum. So for today's metal cast, I'm using A356 aluminum. This is a type of aluminum that is made for sand casting. Most rims are actually made out of this aluminum. However, there are some rims that are made out of 6000 series aluminum. It's not the same stuff. If you guys missed it, last week's video I showed you how to cut up an aluminum rim. So today I'm going to be using all these pieces that I cut up last week. 
So my metal melting furnace is a Viver 12 kg propane furnace. If you'd like to get one yourself, head into the description below and check out my affiliate link. Also, there's a coupon code to go with it. Enough of me yapping. Let's get to melting down some aluminum.
So I just want to mention to you, I don't think that I kept the sprue full of molten aluminum. I might have been pulling some air in with the metal. And the reason for this is because I couldn't pour fast enough because I was afraid of overfilling the mold box and having molten aluminum spill onto the ground. And I didn't show it in the mold making process, but I poked a few little tiny holes in the back side of the pattern. And you can see the smoke exiting those holes. All right, it's been like 45 minutes and this is still hot, but it's solidified and it's time to unveil the casting because I am super excited and I want to see how it came out. I think it came out excellent. Now, the front of it looks great, but it's always a question if the back is good, because that's where you'll get any of the shrinkage. All right guys, so I didn't want to make this a super long video and bore you with cutting away any of the extra aluminum. This is it, this is the final cast and I think it looks great. And look at the back, there is minimal shrinkage. I honestly think there was only the one spot where I poked a hole in for the vent. I also don't even think I needed the feeder because there was no sign of shrinkage on the skull closer to the gate. 